months ago on March 1st, 2023, I saw this tweet right here from Warren Sharp, owner of Sharp Football. He went through the 18 longest Kyler Murray attempts from last season and found that he only completed one. This is a huge surprise. Kyler has one of the best deep balls in the league, a very powerful arm, but all of a sudden, one of his biggest strengths totally 180'd into one of his biggest weaknesses. I charted every one of his deep throws from this season to find out what went wrong, and today we'll divide what did go wrong into four different categories, what no DeAndre Hopkins means, predetermining decisions, misreading concepts, and misreading throws. Starting with the first one, Kyler's career numbers with DeHop and without him are startling. His pass rating drops from 98 to 86, his completion percentage drops 5% to 64, and his yards per attempt goes from 7.5, Joe Burrow territory, to 6.5, which is the Baker Mayfield slums. This is because they use New Hopkins as more of a cheat code, where they'll line him up one-on-one -on -one outside on the opposite side of their three receiver sets and split him out super wide so it's almost impossible to double him. Hop is so deadly at the line of scrimmage with his physical style of play that defenses have to give him a cushion so they don't get beat at the line and give up a huge play over the top. So when Kyler sees that, he gives him a little hand sign, and Hop maintains tons of separation at the top of the route by pushing Chris Harris Jr. vertical to the point where he has to flip his hips, which creates an easy completion. So if you need to press him at the line to limit these easy underneath throws, that's where Kyler's deep ball and his chemistry with Hop come into play. Hop isn't as much a vertical threat to beat you over the top as he once was, but he and Kyler have an unbelievable ability to connect on back shoulder throws, where Kyler throws it a little behind him. And one of the reasons he's so good at consistently making these plays is his ability to win at the top of the route with his physicality. He chops down Elante Taylor's arms to create that little bit of extra separation, and he and Kyler can hit these in their sleep. It is not easy to do this, I'm not saying that, but it's also something that you can't rely on all the time. This is more one-on-one -on -one football than 11-on-11, where Kyler isn't reading safeties, he isn't reading linebackers, just one cornerback on one receiver, so he's not going through progressions, just as pre-decided who he's throwing to. That is not playing NFL quarterback, and that is not sustainable. It's not sustainable because you won't always have a DeAndre Hopkins outside, which is exactly what happened through the first six weeks of the season due to Hop's steroid suspension, and Kyler's numbers, especially his deep ball numbers, absolutely plummeted. His QB rating dropped to 81, his yards per attempt dropped to 5.81, that would be the league's lowest, and just four of his 16 passes of 25 plus air yards were deemed on target by Sports Info Solutions. Kyler has to play iso ball outside to succeed, but without D-Hop, he can't effectively. Arizona loves putting guys outside to cater to what he does best, but with Hollywood Brown, who is known for his speed and not contested back shoulder catches, he couldn't fill the role that Kyler desperately needs him to to be successful, and there are plenty of examples why. Corners know his game is all speed, so if you get on top of him, he's not going to hurt you going up to make a catch. AJ Green, who just retired, isn't that guy either, but they found out early that Hollywood couldn't do it, so they were forced to go to him, but he was too cooked to do it either. They tried plenty of other guys outside just to see if that chemistry and ability was there, but it just wasn't. Obviously, Kyler's numbers will decline without DeAndre Hopkins, you can't replace his talent with just anybody, but that's the problem, you won't always have him. Another problem with this ISO ball reliant scheme is if the defense has somebody capable of guarding their ISO guy, Hop was still out during this week 3 game. When the other team has a Jalen Ramsey, the game plan just isn't feasible to win over and over. When defenses can take away Hop, or if he's literally taken away because he's suspended, Kyler doesn't have a second pitch, and in the first 6 games of the season, that was more apparent than ever. At times, he would predetermine his throws, our second category, where he would decide before the snap he was going to throw to the deeper receiver, which, when they couldn't play iso ball, he had to actually make decisions based on what the defense was giving him. This is a heat concept, which is designed to punish over-aggressive safeties. It's schemed up to attack defenses who are using their high safety to cut a crosser, and if he does, both the Miami route and the post route will come open. However, Kyler predetermines he's throwing the deep post to Hollywood because he knows he has the speed, but 
not one but two safeties cap the post, making it a dead route. And yes, this is a tight zone window to AJ Green, but it is designed for him to whip it back out, and there is room to throw him open so he can adjust to it, but Kyler thinks that he and Hollywood are still ripping scrubs like it's their old Oklahoma days. This leads us to our third category, misreading concepts, where quarterbacks need to be able to identify the right defender to determine where his open man will be. Typically, quarterbacks will throw away from that defender, but last year Kyler struggled to throw to the right receiver. This is a spear concept, which is a one-high safety beater with the two deep crossers and big post alert. Kyler is reading this one deep safety and will throw wherever he isn't. If he cuts one of the crossers, that leaves the other one-on-one, -on -one. and if he sees him vacate his position early, he can throw what's called a big post alert, where he ignores his progression on the crossers and tries to punish the safety for leaving his spot up top. Neither crosser gets much separation, but Kyler constantly forces balls to his boy Hollywood that constantly don't work out. Quick disclaimer, he did get hit while throwing here, which is always going to affect the quality of the pass, but still, the read was wrong, and that leads to a lot of bad results. Reading leverage is another one of the most critical aspects of playing the position. You'll hardly ever have guys wide open, but understanding when the defense is on the backside shoulder of your receiver is often as open as a receiver is going to get. When Kyler has this triangle of defenders to read, instead of focusing on Zach Ertz breaking outside when the linebacker has inside leverage, so Ertz has a step on him to the sideline and can use his body to shield him away, Kyler tries to split the corner in safety and just woefully underthrows the ball. Incorrectly reading the defense hurts you on deep balls, but obviously also underneath, just in different ways. Only throwing go balls outside doesn't let you properly develop as a quarterback, so here on 4th and 4, since they don't have D-Hop outside and Ramsey is sitting out there on Andre Bocellia, Kyler knows he can't target his go-to route. He needs to read out this levels concept, which is a deeper in and then two short ins that he'll read inside out, so he knows that he can read Ernest Jones to see if he carries the first in, so he can take the second with leverage. But when they drop a defensive end into that window, Kyler hasn't developed to the point where he can reset to his third read to convert the fourth down, and by the time he is able to get the ball off, his receiver is covered. This leads us right into our final issue, which is even when he does find the right receiver in the down to throw to, some issues pop up with him identifying the correct type of throw to make. Throw selection is so important, where it's not just who to throw to, but how to throw it, and that's something Kyler struggles with. This goes back a bit to what we were talking about with our other Vikings play, where Kyler isn't reading leverage properly and instead prefers to spam go balls. It's third and seven, and Patrick Peterson is about seven yards off the ball, and Zach Ertz is matched on this linebacker on a 12-yard out route. Instead of attacking leverage and making the throw, Kyler attempts the go ball, which isn't a great decision, but here it's more the type of go ball that is the issue. AJ Green gets a little bit of separation on Peterson, but not by much, but instead of lofting this ball to the back corner of the end zone over him, Kyler throws a laser, more as if Green is wide open, or like it's a hole shot or something like that, which allows Peterson to come back into the play. I do have one last issue for you guys, which I didn't put into the four categories. It's just the fact that Kyler still cannot consistently hit his receivers over the middle of the field. This is actually a video I made last year that I'll put in the description box. And a major part of that is, yeah, he simply cannot see over the middle of the field because of his height. This leaves a lot of the deeper throws on the field, the over the middle ones, which saps his overall numbers. Quarterbacks have to be able to sit in the pocket and scan through their progressions to attack defenses to find wherever they're weak, and Kyler hasn't proven he can do that. Having DeAndre Hopkins would help any quarterback, and it's okay to use him as a cheat code like they do, but you also have to develop over time to strengthen the other parts of your game for when he's not available, and that's been the biggest issue. Right now, Kyler is a great thrower of the football, but he is not a quarterback, and that's a huge difference. He can throw isos outside, he can throw bubble screens, and he can whoop your ass in the QB run game, but that's not enough to win consistently at the position. He does things not many others can, but he is also deeply flawed. He won't always have a D-hop. Hell, D-hop is getting old and he might not even be D-hop anymore. But the best quarterbacks can win with many different players around them, and this iteration of Kyler is not a long-term solution. He needs to develop in other areas, he needs to not force throws, he needs to stop misreading concepts, and needs to improve the weaker parts of his game. 
Heineke is coming off an ACL injury that very well could limit his mobility, at least in the short term, which for many mobile quarterbacks is a death blow. But maybe, just maybe for Kyler, this is exactly what he needs. A career reset. A reset of who he is as a quarterback. The perfect time to elevate those other parts of his game that need to be stronger so he can be stronger moving forward. Elevate those other parts to then also sprinkle in the ISO fades outside. Add in a dash of the QB run game, a slice of the bubble screens to all their talented receivers. And if Kyler can do that, the Cardinals will be back in action. Oh